Trappist 1 is easily the most iconic planetary system outside the solar system, and for good reason. It currently hosts seven confirmed planets, all of which are very close to the size of Earth in mass and radius, three of which are in the star's habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. They orbit a very small red dwarf star, and are very closely packed together, with their orbital separations more comparable to the distances between Jupiter's Galilean moons than the solar system planets. These planets have also been extensively studied by James Webb and other telescopes. We know with a very high degree of confidence that TRAPPIST-1b, the first and hottest planet of the system, is an airless rock with no atmosphere. TRAPPIST-1c is likely to be airless as well. But so far, every other planet in the system is pretty much a toss-up. But for a few years now, there's been very slight evidence that TRAPPIST-1 has more to offer than just these seven planets. All seven of them transit their star from our perspective, and because they're so close to each other, they significantly pull on each other's orbits. This causes transit timing variations, as sometimes other planets will slightly delay or speed up the transits of other planets. And transit timing variations in the TRAPPIST-1 planets seem to hint as the unconfirmed possibility of something else going on in the system, with the potential for additional unseen planets. But all this unconfirmed speculation about new TRAPPIST-1 planets has been greatly exacerbated due to this new paper that came out recently. The actual paper itself is about TRAPPIST-1 b and c, again providing evidence that neither of them have any significant atmosphere. But buried deep in the paper, not even mentioned in the abstract, they mention a new candidate planet in the system, TRAPPIST-1 i. Of course, this seems like it's a pretty important discovery, and I have no doubt there will be a lot of people talking about it online very soon. I mean, I'm making this video right now, and another YouTuber who I've collaborated with before, Trology, has already made one. I'm trying to jump on this early because, at least what I've seen so far, this discovery is already being pretty overhyped and misrepresented. So hopefully I can get some more information out there before the hype takes over the conversation. With that out of the way, what's actually going on here? Is there really an 8th planet in TRAPPIST-1, and if there is, what is it like? First, we're going to go over the alleged new candidate from the new paper, and if it exists, what it could be like. One important thing to note is that the paper that claims to have detected what may have been a sign of a planet doesn't even mention it in the abstract or the title of the paper, because it wasn't their main focus. The actual paper itself, as already mentioned, is about TRAPPIST-1 b and c, the first two planets of the system. This already raises some suspicion about the validity of this candidate. If it was detected with any amount of confidence, it probably would have been a bigger part of the paper, as discovering a new TRAPPIST-1 planet is probably a bit more noteworthy than providing more evidence about planets B and C not having atmospheres, something we already expect to be true. What they actually found was a single dimming event of TRAPPIST-1, which looks like it could have been the transit of a planet, dating back to November 2023 at 4 sigma confidence. Essentially, they are decently confident that something did cause TRAPPIST-1 to extremely slightly dim for about two days, but aren't sure what it was, and listed an additional planet as a possible explanation. So to make it clear, TRAPPIST-1i is currently not considered a planet candidate, or even an unconfirmed planet. The paper itself states that this is an extremely weak candidate at the absolute best, and more likely than not to not actually exist at worst. I know some people who watch my videos like to do this, so don't go adding TRAPPIST-1i as a candidate to Wikipedia or anything. Currently, its detection was not strong enough to fully consider it an actual planetary candidate. However, an additional planet does remain a possible explanation for what happened here. So to make it clear as possible, there is no new candidate planet at TRAPPIST-1, but there was something that happened in the system that could, in theory, be explained by a planet we haven't detected yet. So let's assume for a second that this signal does turn out to be an actual real planet. If it does, then what is it like? Well, if TRAPPIST-1i does turn out to actually be real, it is extremely small. As in, easily one of the smallest exoplanets ever found, roughly 22% the radius of Earth, or 2,800 kilometers wide. For comparison, the planet Mercury is 4,800 kilometers wide, Pluto is 2,400, and Neptune's moon Triton is 2,700 kilometers wide. So this planet, if it actually exists, would only be marginally bigger than Triton and Pluto. To better illustrate this, here's a size comparison of Mercury, Triton, Pluto, the Moon, and the estimated size for TRAPPIST-1i, if a planet did actually cause the dimming event. And here it is in comparison to the other TRAPPIST-1 planets. As you can see, this TRAPPIST-1i candidate is not only the smallest planet in its system, it's smaller than Mercury and the Moon. Other things in the solar system that are bigger than this TRAPPIST-1i candidate include all four major moons of Jupiter and Saturn's moon Titan. I think it's kind of funny how if this does turn out to be a real planet, it's so much smaller than all the others. You have seven roughly Earth-sized planets very similar to one another, and then this weirdly small one on the outskirts of the system. 
Unfortunately, that means if this does actually get confirmed as a real planet, we can't really say Trappist 1 is 8 Earth sized planets. We can say it has 7 Earth sized planets and 1 Moon sized one, though. Of course, this raises the question of whether or not this should even be considered a planet at all, and if this should instead be the first ever exo dwarf planet. I'm not going to get into that because, as I've already explained, this isn't a very strong candidate and has a good chance of not existing. But I will say that given how close it is to the star, I'd say it's pretty likely that if this planet exists, it has a cleared orbit. If this planet does turn out to exist, it would have a 28-day orbit around the star, the longest year yet of any TRAPPIST-1 planet. This would put it far outside the habitable zone and much further out than even TRAPPIST-1h, which has an 18.7-day orbit. Interestingly, if this orbital period is correct, it puts this candidate at a 2-3 orbital resonance with H. This will be important for the next section of the video. This is why, if TRAPPIST-1i actually is a real planet, I would expect it to resemble something like Saturn's moons Rhea or Dione, a cold, dead, airless ice ball. It's much further away from all the other planets, so I personally doubt that any tidal forces would be strong enough to produce any interesting geologic processes, and given its small size, it'd probably be inactive on its own. But maybe it could resemble something like a less active version of Europa if it exists. As I just mentioned, TRAPPIST-1i, the version proposed by the paper, isn't a very strong candidate. In fact, some tests of the signal actually favor the exclusion of a candidate, meaning more likely than not, it doesn't exist. There is still a chance of this being a real planet, just not a high one. Even the paper itself admits that there really is no good reason to consider this a candidate. However, TRAPPIST-1i isn't a very strong candidate when you only consider this one paper. But there have been countless other studies of the TRAPPIST-1 system. So is there any other evidence of this planet that we may have missed? Before I start this section of the video, there's one very important caveat to make. I'll spoil it right now and say that yes, there may be some additional evidence that TRAPPIST-1i could exist. However, using other papers as evidence is pure speculation. Until all of these separate points of evidence are combined into a single paper proposing TRAPPIST-1i as a candidate, all of this will remain speculation based on several coincidences, and basically pattern recognition regardless of if a pattern actually exists or not. Essentially, imagine all these other lines of evidence as separate proposals for different TRAPPIST-1i's. Until someone can confirm that all of this is actually evidence of the same planet, it doesn't really have any weight for confirming or disproving TRAPPIST-1i as proposed by the newest paper. Also, this research hasn't been officially published yet. This means that while some astronomers did go and do research, their research hasn't been reviewed by others, so you should take basically this entire section of the video with a grain of salt. The biggest line of evidence comes from some follow-up observations of the TRAPPIST-1 system, which find that predictions of where TRAPPIST-1h should be, based on a 2021 study, don't line up to where it actually is. This is just one of two things. Either the timing of TRAPPIST-1h has an excess of outliers that skewed their data, or more interestingly, the seven-planet model for TRAPPIST-1 is not accurate to how the system is actually working, suggesting that there is an eighth outer planet, TRAPPIST-1i. However, it's not currently known if the new TRAPPIST-1i candidate is big enough to produce the variations that may have been observed. Also, as I briefly mentioned already, the newest TRAPPIST-1i candidate is in a 2-3 orbital resonance with planet H. The entire TRAPPIST-1 system is already in resonance with each other, so this is exactly what we would expect if this planet was real. So to sum it all up, someone detected a dimming event in TRAPPIST-1 at 4 sigma confidence that theoretically could be explained by a new 8th planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system, designated TRAPPIST-1i. This is not very compelling evidence for a planet, and isn't strong enough evidence to even officially make TRAPPIST-1i a candidate. But if it is explained by a planet, it would have to be extremely small, smaller than both Mercury and Earth's moon, and only slightly bigger than Triton and Pluto. Unrelated transit timing variations of TRAPPIST-1h, as detected by a different unpublished and unreviewed paper from a few years ago, suggest that the seven-planet model for TRAPPIST-1 might not work, and an additional planet might be necessary to explain it. The TRAPPIST-1i potential candidate as detected by the newest paper is in a 2-3 resonance with planet H, something that we should expect if it was a real planet, but that's not evidence on its own and could just be a coincidence. In short, there is no strong evidence of TRAPPIST-1i at this time. But there are hints of it. While I wouldn't jump the gun and call this a candidate yet, it does seem like a possibility that an additional planet in TRAPPIST-1 could explain these separate pieces of evidence. However, until someone actually explains their TRAPPIST-1i could explain the TTVs of planet H and the November 2023 transit, I wouldn't call this a candidate yet. So what needs to be done to make TRAPPIST-1i an actual candidate, and after that, how could we confirm it? Luckily, we have several years of TRAPPIST-1 observations. 
the first thing to do is look through that for signs of other transits. Because this planet, if it exists, is so small, it could have easily been missed by less powerful telescopes, explaining why we haven't found it until James Webb started observing the system. We know its orbital period, roughly 28 days, so if you search the system for transits on 28-day intervals, that would be a really easy way to confirm TRAPPIST-1i as a candidate, or if nothing is found, rule it out. But as for now, as of the time I'm making this video in early September, basically consider TRAPPIST-1i a candidate-candidate planet. More observations are needed to confirm it as a candidate, and then more observations are needed to confirm it as a real planet. I wanted to make this video clear misinformation about this planet before it starts, because I have no doubt that there will be people very soon trying to claim a new TRAPPIST-1 planet was found when it wasn't. So just be aware that we are in the very beginning stages of even proposing a new candidate around TRAPPIST-1, and unfortunately we will just have to wait for more observations. So don't go getting all hyped up and telling everyone there's a new TRAPPIST-1 planet candidate, because that didn't happen. I made this video specifically to say that nothing has happened, and no new discoveries have been made yet. That being said, I will keep this video updated in the pinned comment if anything new happens, and will definitely make a full video if this ever gets confirmed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.